Today I bought the LEGO Star Wars 2014 Viewing Starfighter. This at 75039 comes with two minifigures, 201 pieces, and retailed back in the day in 2014 for $20. $5. In today's video, we are going to be diving into it as well as first off adjusting for inflation, what it would cost now. Just taking a nice look at this really awesome $25 set from one of the greatest eras of LEGO Star Wars. So with that said, I'm going to hit that subscribe button and we're going to get right on into it. Now first we are taking a look of course at the box art. It looks like this is circling the planet of course not. You tell based off of down there. You have the new spring loaded shooter look with the th iconic 2014 box art. Oh this is the stuff of legends right here. I love the little cracks and the little lava. This is just one of my favorite box art designs of all time for pure nostalgia. No reason other. It's not objectively the best. I just love it. And you have the Lego Star Wars logo in that great orange color and it, oh, the box just looks so incredibly clean. And on the the back you have a great little thing it looks like it's landed on one of the jedi temple platforms ironically you have loads of looks at the features you have a little bit of it in action and you have it you know laid out you have the lego star wars dot com thing and then on top of that on the bottom you do have all the special information and on the top you do have the dimensions for the figure sizes which is always nice and they did do the side box art back then but it was more in these like weird boxes so like it wouldn't line up very well uh, but it is still pretty cool. Now, you did get a nice little instruction booklet. Very straightforward, very simple, you know, usual instruction booklet. There were barely any even advertisements for other sets available at the time. You have the little website thing with this kid, and you have the wind kit on the back, which is always very nice. Now first up we have the widely accredited V-Wing pilot. This is a very basic minifigure. It has gray on the legs and arms, which I honestly thought was weird. I thought it was a bluish color. Either way, you do get the nice torso print and torso back print as well as, again, this pretty uh, decently used helmet style. This is not a like brand new exclusive for the set. And if you look at the actual thing, it is just printed on you get the one little face print which i think is interesting uh you know if i were lego i would have probably included like a separate clone print for the back but this is obviously how the viewing pilots look and they don't look bad it looks really kind of cool and here we have the famous astromech droid this is not actually a named character of any sort but it is a nice red astromech droid it has some silver highlights up top but it is really kind of generic, and there is actually kind of a rumor that it was re-put in the set as a reference to this one with another generic astromech droid in the Tatooine Battle Pack, which I think is quite neat. And overall, it's just kind of a fun little droid. Nothing else special about it. Overall, this set certainly could have used an extra figure, to which I don't exactly have a suggestion. Even if it was a buzz droid, or just some sort of super battle droid, I really wouldn't judge too much. They just needed one extra thing, in my opinion. And with that said, let's get into the build. Here is the V-Wing Starfighter of 2014, and just for a quick size comparison, here is what it is next to the new modern Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. And it is about in the same scale, and again, adjusted for inflation, prices are pretty good, and sets are staying relatively similar in size, if not getting bigger. And this set is absolutely jam-packed with awesome details, so we're going to start with it. First off, in the front, we do have loads of stickering, and I mean loads. We have one, two, three, four, five stickers right here, and we also have a sticker right here. So there are so many of them. There's a sticker here, ironically not one on this side. They are highly detailed and nice-looking stickers. There are just a lot of them, and they are big. I got lucky applying them, I'll be honest. Maybe they just happen to be easier to apply on this particular set. But it was still a lot of stickers, so that is, of course, a major detriment to a set like this. Uh, and then, obviously, you can move up, and you do have a control panel, which is actually really nice. And I love the way this control panel just kind of goes far. You have, like, a full-on dashboard. Uh, and then you actually do have, obviously, area to put your pilot. 
Now, you can, I believe, even have him hold his blaster while you sit him down, which is great for storage purposes. Uh, you know, you just have him sit down. He sits perfectly nice and tight. And, you know, if you want to have him, you know, just his hands a little, he can have that. Uh, and then as for the droid, it's a little more complicated and a little less well done than, say, the Obi-Wan Starfighter. You do have to take off the head, of course, and put it on the rotating piece, like the Obi-Wan Starfighter. But unlike that set, you have nowhere to put the body, which is unfortunate. They probably could have squeezed somewhere in the back to do it, but, you know, it is what it is. As for the back, though, you do get this little Republic logo here. And that is, of course, a sticker. You can load this up and you conceal it. And you have the little green engines back there, of course. We will move the droid body to the side. And your ship is now fully loaded. Now, as for the landing gear, it does require a little help. You obviously do have the little landing gear strip. So without this, you just kind of lean forward. You also, of course, do have the clear brick. But without this, it, you know, struggles a little more in terms of levity because it doesn't keep it balanced as much. You could put this down and it will stay in place, which is nice, of course. Uh, but, you know, this certainly does add the extra necessity of, you know, keeping it balanced, which I do like. And as for the main play function here, what you're going to want to do is lift up the landing gear and you're going to pick up. There it is, the V-Wing Starfighter. Like that, playability. You do have the Flick Fire Missiles, which are actually implemented quite nicely. And all you have to do to implement them is push down, and they will fire like so. They fire across entire rooms, so they are great. And then the reloading process is quite simple, where you just load it up. And like that, you have a fully working V-Wing Starfighter that is quite nice, quite swooshable. Certainly reminds you of a TIE Fighter with the way these things look, for sure and is actually not too bad. Now, for the $25 price back in the day, I would imagine this would be quite a hefty amount, especially for only really one minifigure and a droid, especially, and just a lack of interesting figures. You are getting the V-Wing pilot and some interest and an interesting looking astromech, both of which are unnamed. You're also getting some cool mechanisms, but other than that, really, you are getting more of a lackluster set compared to most Lego Star Wars sets, which I find quite interesting. Now let's get into my full unfiltered thoughts on the V-Wing Starfighter. Now starting off right off the bat, this set today would cost $31.28 in infl inflation. So basically this is the equivalent of one of our modern $30 sets. And honestly, that's about right. You know, it's $5 difference or so. And it is a really fun model. As for the figures, I'll be honest, they're not that interesting. Could this have used a third minifigure? Absolutely. And I think this is one of the biggest flaws of these 2014 style sets is, you know, like the, when they do an Anakin Starfighter, they throw in an Anakin and R2. It fits in the ship and they work really well, but that's all they put in. And what I like about new sets in particular, like say the Obi-Wan Starfighter, you're getting that little extra awesome figure like a Kaminoan. So for instance, it would have been cool in this one if we could have seen another character they could have thrown in a cool Jedi or another clone trooper. And practically the only minifigure you're getting is this relatively uninteresting pilot, which while neat is just not really a really exciting figure that will sell this set. And it's probably part of why this set was not nearly as popular because you didn't have any two interesting people in it. Throw in a Jedi, and I honestly think this would set would be way cooler. Now, at base value, it is a nice little set. I do like the play features a lot. I do like that you'd spin this. I love the uh, usage of the flick fire, or the spring-loaded shooters, rather, which were relatively new at the time. I like the landing gear. I like the cockpit. It's a great-looking little model to army build, and especially with the Bad Batch show coming and these guys being prominent last season, I'm sure we're going to be seeing these more and more. And it is just a fun, nice little build that is often forgotten about and one of the more forgotten about Republic Starfighters. But either way, with that said, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. I will see you all in the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome. Hey, you almost left this video without pressing the like button. What's the deal? Why would you do that? I don't I don't appreciate that. Just hit that like button. It means the world. You could, you could do that. Uh, all right, you, you can go now. Catch you later.